The spirit of anger is uh, something real, like uh, my uncle was saying, this something that I was really, um, asking God to help me with. You're probably thinking like, oh man, we saw David preach before. You mean he was dealing with anger and all that? Well, anger don't anger don't just jump, you know, anger don't, don't pass everybody up. You know, it's something that's uh, really deep inside of us. It's that uh it's that emotion that uh that you know you don't have to just uh, you know be hitting the walls all the time. You know, or, or and, and notice it in somebody. Somebody can carry it around for years and years and years and generation and generation. You ever you ever run into somebody and they say, uh, "Man, you know, I haven't talked to him in so long, you know, because I was mad at them," or "I haven't been to that place in so long because they did something to me back then." You think like, "Dang, I didn't even know that." You know, you you, you come all the time, or I, I saw y'all talking, or or you don't even act like you're mad. You know, you smiled at them or whatever. You really don't like them? No, nah, man, I really don't, man. They did something to me about 10 years ago, and it's like right here still. I've had that. I've done that. Anybody ever done you wrong? Man, and you still hold that? Maybe some in this room, maybe some in this, in this room huh? You don't know. It happens to me. It happened to me a bunch of times. You know, like, you know, you see that person, you know, you know, you're supposed to be nice to them, but there's that inside, you know, there's that feeling inside. There's like, you know, you go that way. They're over there. You go that way. There they are again. You go that way. You know, it's just like you never can, you know, you try to duck and dodge, but you can't never duck and dodge that feeling because it hurts. It hurts you. You're mad, frustrated. Well, let me tell you something about our God. He wants everything, everything that bothers you. He wants every single thing. He, he wants every part of you. He wants to heal everything. He wants that little hurt, that big hurt, that small hurt, that sometimes hurt, that big anger, that little anger, whatever. He wants it all. He wants it all. Um, Pastor Albert touched it, or my uncle, uh, touched uh, on a lot last uh, Sunday. And uh, he mentioned a part uh, about anger, and that's being frustrated. And that's something that I had to really understand where my anger was. You know, there's always a root, there's always a base when it comes to anger. And toward mine, I didn't understand about, frust about being frustrated. Anybody here frustrated? Not really. If you're not frustrated, man. You must live in a rainbow and sunshine world. And, I'm, and, I, and I just want to, you know, I'm, I'm going to see what your tools are or how you do that. But, you know, frustration is part of all of us. It's part of all of us. How many of us were frustrated with the rain today? Ladies, <laughs> my hair is going to be poofy. The darn rain? For real, God? Oh, but can you let it rain, Lord, in my grass, mud? But, you know, we're back and forth. But we all can be frustrated, Amen. Frustration is just, a, you know, feeling discouragement, anger, being annoyed. Frustration is a very vulnerable place for us to be. Very vulnerable. And also, it's vulnerable because, I mean, depending on how frustrated you are, you're real frustrated, little frustrated, it doesn't matter, really, because when you're frustrated, I mean, frustrated, you are really, really just in a vulnerable place. You can go left, you can go right, you can be, you can go off on somebody. You can close yourself off when you're frustrated. Me, I was so frustrated, but I didn't know why. I didn't know why, how, why I was so frustrated. I knew who God was. He was doing good things in my life, but I was still frustrated. I didn't understand that. I was so annoyed by everything. And my kind of anger, which I'll share with you, you know me, I'm pretty transparent. My frustrated, for me, is I get violent. I get very angry. Or I just black out, or I don't care 
who sees me, who hears me, I just don't care once I reach that level. And I saw it coming in my life. It was creeping up on me. One of my good buddies was praying for me a, couple, a while back, and they were telling me that the enemy was going to try to switch me like wheat. And I didn't understand that either, really, you know, because that frustration in me was so, it was up a level where I couldn't even receive anything from God anymore. I didn't even want to come in this place. I didn't want to be around anybody. I wanted to know why, but I wasn't asking the questions why. But I saw it started to come out now. I held it in so long. I balled it up, you know, because I know I'm a Christian. You know, you guys see me preach. You know, my uncle's a pastor. You know, y'all see me do this and that. So I bottled up my anger because I thought I had to perform. You know, I had to be somebody. But you don't have to be on this end. You can be a dad. You know, you don't want to see your kids do certain things. Because guess what? Your kids are the, your kids are the, the worst ones. They'll use that stuff against you, man. <laughs> you tell them to do something, you'll be like, well, you just did it. You know, so it was balling up in me. I didn't know Pastor Albert touched on it last week about the release, you know. It was going to come out. One way or another, that anger inside me was going to come out. When you're frustrated, it's going to come out. You don't know who it's going to come out on. You don't know where it's going to come out on. And if you don't got God or the Holy Spirit, you don't have a connection with him, it's probably going to come out not the way you want it to come out. I pray to God in here, I must be real with you, that nobody here is really feeling abused at home. If there is, today's the day that, that I'm going to pray and we're going to pray. We're coming against that spirit of anger today. When I walked in this place, I told God, right after, I said, Lord, it's time to go to war. Because the spirit of anger is everywhere. I see it all the time. As soon as my power comes on in my house, I'm going to flip on TV and I'll probably see some more anger. Everywhere you go, there's anger. And that's that spirit of anger. That's that frustration. It's coming to a level in somebody. Now they can't control it. Now that it's all in their mind, their mind. You ever be so mad at somebody, you can actually, you can actually see you hitting them? Anybody? Maybe you're frustrated by listening to me. I don't know. Maybe you don't like me. Be real. Maybe when you hear David going to preach, oh, my God, here comes that dude. I want Pastor Albert. I want Pastor TC, Pastor Joel to talk over my life, Pastor Tim. Ever been frustrated in church? You know, I don't, the frustration, it's, it's everything. I mean, it could be anywhere. It comes from any any form, it doesn't matter. We was at a, at a restaurant the other day. Well, let me tell you like this. When God starts to mess with me about my feelings, it will just pop up, everything. I start seeing it, you know, everywhere, you know. When he deals with me, I don't know how he deals with you, but when he starts dealing with me with stuff, like anger, pride, whatever, it's just there everywhere I go. It's like a flashing light. <laughs> I see it everywhere, like, God, Lord, everywhere, you know. I want to close my eyes. Because he's talking to me all the time, you know. But you can see it. And so I was at the restaurant, and there was this waiter there, uh, a busboy, I guess you'd call him. And he was over there, and, man, he would get that, that tub. And when people would leave, you know, he had to clean the dishes, man. He, boom, he was slamming on there. And he spilled something, man. And he just grabbed the, that napkin. He just threw it, bam, on the deal. He said some things that I ain't going to say in here, but he was mad. But he just mad, just boom, just boom. Every time he had to clean some of his dishes, he was throwing. The frustration of him doing that was getting me frustrated. And I, was, I honestly, I thought about it. I was like, man, I'm going to tell him something. Like, you know, hey, man, you know, you okay? You know, you cool? You know, don't scare my son, man. You know, but, but like, I've been teasing my wife all day. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm healed. I've been telling her I'm healed from being angry. So I told her, I'm healed. I'm not going to say anything. But you can see it. You can see it in people. You know, I, I, I cut somebody off on the road one time by my house. Uh, we was coming out, and I, I didn't mean to. You know, I'm not that kind of driver, but I did. 
And man, he got behind me, man. I looked at my rearview mirror and he had a gun. He, had, he didn't have a real gun, but he, he did with his finger like this. He went, pow, like that. And then he drove by me, man. He gave me a mean look. I, when I get mad, I, shh, I get mad too. But I got my kids in the car, you know, my kids. But anyway, I was like, I thought about that. Wow. I made him that frustrated where he wanted, he, if he had a gun, he was going to pop me. Like he, and that happens every day, right? We've been hearing on the news, people with road rage. It's that frustration, just like that. Just like that. But you know what? It didn't happen right there. It didn't happen because I cut him off. He was already frustrated. Like I'm telling you, frustration can live in us so much. We can just ball it up, ball it up, let it fill up, let it fill up, let it fill, let it fill up until something little like that might happen. Something cut you off or whatever, and then oh, you just release. You don't know how it's going to come out, depending on, you know, how bad you really get anger. I've seen, I, I lived with anger my whole childhood. You know, well, except when my grandma was, you know, my, when my grandma passed away, that's when I started living with other people, but I saw frustration. I saw frustrated people in my life. And it was pretty violent. But my frustration, like I told you before, was starting to come out. It was starting to come out. The Bible tells us in Psalms 37, 8, if you want to write it down, you want to memorize it, I want to give you some verses here, okay? Because I dug in that word, man. Because I, I didn't want my anger coming out, you know what I'm saying? I did not want it coming out the wrong way. It was trying to, it wanted to, and it has, you know, my frustration. This, you know, brothers, husbands, you know, sad to say when we get frustrated, who, who do we, who gets the best end of that? Who gets the end of our frustration, brothers? That's right, our wives. Now, I ain't no marriage counselor. Believe that. <laughs> but I've been in my share of counseling because of my anger. But, me, but being so frustrated, my honey always gets the last. She gets the end of it. She gets the, you know, like Pastor I was talking about, you know, uh, you know, their wives always tell you how to drive and all that, you know. Man, and my Jenny, man, boy. She does that more than anybody, man, I'm telling you. But now, but now I'm on this end of things. Now I'm on this end. It really ain't that bad. But my frustration was so bad that anything she said, I was going to go off anyway. It didn't take her much. Like she, she says, now, y'all want to ride with me in my truck? Please do so I can get some other opinions. <laughs> Okay, I need some other opinions of, to help me out on my driving skills. I think I'm pretty good. Knock on wood or, Lord, I, I, I haven't got a ticket in a long time. Even when I was on drugs and, and did beer, I didn't even get that. You know, but she says I'll tailgate a lot, but I don't I know. And she says I use my brakes a lot, but she would do this thing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean what I'm doing? Driving. What are you doing? He was like, God, you was real close. And I was like, for real? I was like, I can't even see his license plate. <laughs> I need glasses anyway, so, you know. But I use, I use that. And she was like, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you driving so fast? I was like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going uh, 60 and a 55, only five, only five more. I know, but you're speeding. I was like, really? How slow do you want me to go? <laughs> but my tone was like, it ain't, it ain't like I'm telling you. I was like, Gosh, man, what are you doing? You know, like, I'm going where I'm supposed to. You know, I'm a loud talker anyway. So you imagine when I'm frustrated, I got that Puerto Rican and Choctaw come out of me, and it just, my hands be doing all that. <laughs> that Puerto Rican and Choctaw, man, you don't mess around, man. When I get frustrated, it just comes out like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, for real. But it didn't take much for her it didn't take much for her, I mean, for me to get frustrated. And I started to the point where I was just like, you know, just, just really having an outburst. You know, never hit her or anything like that. Or, you know, I wouldn't be here. Dad probably shoot me. But, you know, I never did do that to her. 
But I, I'm not trying to make you feel sorry for me. I'm not trying to make you feel sorry for her. We're not here to, you know, say I got the best testimony in the church or anything like that. I'm not, believe me, I don't want that title. <laughs> don't want that title. But I'm, as brothers and sisters, I'm just trying to be real with you. And I'm hoping the spirit of anger, man, we can just kick it in the rear, man. Because it's killing us. But I get mad at her. Nothing I'm proud of. Nothing I'm proud of, of her outburst and telling her what for, you know, and just really getting ticked, man. I'm talking about ticked, like this, mm, where, yeah, I ain't going to lie, a little bit in my mind, like, dude, I just want to hit something, man. But thank God that I got a, enough God in me that I can still hear a little bit of that, you know, pull me back a little. You know what I'm saying? Just pull a, li- a little bit. God's so powerful. That's all he did. It's a little bit. And I still had that. You know, so I'm like, when I do go off and I'm, I can still feel that. Don't go that far. But still, you went too far. You hear what I'm saying? Don't go that far, but I still went too far by cussing, getting mad. Like, and me, I don't stop. Who in, who in this room likes to, like, when somebody makes you mad, you just cannot stop arguing. And the other person's like, can you just stop, please? I'm not done. I'm just going off. I say, oh, you know, I'm done. And you go back to that room like the two seconds later because you're not done. That's that frustration. And as my wife, my wife will tell you, she's like, he just won't stop. He can't stop. And I couldn't because Pastor Albert did an awesome job about talking about the body, the energy, the, you know, like your nostrils and turning green. And I probably did all that. But, like, I couldn't control it. I couldn't control it. I had to come out. And guess what? The enemy gave me a target. He gave me a target. It wasn't on wall. It was my honey. Not too long ago, it started to be my son. The one who I said to God, I would never yell at. Would never show him the, the, you know, the violent part of, of, of my anger. But pretty soon, he started frustrating me. And I started telling him, like, I told you don't do that, boy. Get your tail over there. That's, that's how it is. That's how, like, too much. Like, just, and I just, like, my, the energy, I just, I couldn't stop. I told her, I, we've been talking about it ever since, you know, I got free from it. And I'm starting to tell her and start to talk to her about things and stuff. And I told her, I said, I just couldn't stop. I said, I couldn't stop, man. I can't stop. Like, I just can't stop. Well, oh, no, recently, no, I told her that when I started to go over the board, that's when I started telling her. Like I said, honey, I can't stop no more. I said, I need help. I said, I need help. It's getting to the point where, like, I just want to smash somebody. Like, it's starting to come out. And it started coming at work. And When it got, a, one time when I really know that it started to come out is that a while back we was in Houston or whatever, getting her jewelry. We just, we was having a good time, man, a good time, man. It was, you know, and I hate going to Houston and getting jewelry <laughs> for her boutique. Boy, if you ever want to just get on my nerves, ask me to go somewhere on a Saturday. And boy, man, back then, now I'm cool. But man, back then, oh my God, ask me anything. I'll go anywhere, do anything. I'll probably dance. I don't like dancing, but tell me to go dance. I'd rather really dance than go to Shopping. Husbands, come on. Come on, man. You, come on. You, your wife asks you to do something, you know, and you just, it just aggravates you to the point where they can see it. Don't do it now. Why not? I see you. I said I'll go. <laughs> it's not like, I'll go with you, babe. I said I'm going. Does that, yeah, the difference. Frustration. So we was doing that, and we had a huge argument in Houston. Now, I don't know if y'all ever been to certain parts of Houston, but it's, it's busy. And I started arguing with her. And mind you now, it was, this, this has been going on for a little while. But all of a sudden, her door comes open, and she just flies out. 
Like my heart dropped because she just got out in mid traffic, light, Houston, and my little honey. She didn't care, flip flop, and it was raining, but she was gone. <laughs> Boy, if you want, man, I, that day, that day God just slapped me when she got out because my heart dropped. I was like, and then my son was in the car, and she never does that in front of my son. I'm the one that either argues and does that. She'll, she won't do that. And I just like, what do you do? What am I going to do? And, man, I was, felt so dumb. I was following her down the road. I was like, I could have got arrested, man, trying to pick up her, you know. And she's pretty anyway, you know what I'm saying? I'm ugly, so, like, <laughs> trying to pick up a prostitute or something, arrest that guy. <laughs> got following her, you know. Come in the car, please, you know. <laughs> Begging her, like, just. I mean, it's funny now, but there and then it was so bad. I called my uncle and, you know. Yeah. She told me to stop. But it started to do, it started to get like that. My frustration started to get to the point where she couldn't handle no more. And I told my son, I was all like, well, I looked at him and I saw the fear in his eyes. And I, I, I didn't mean to do this to him. I, I did to my daughter. You know, I told her, don't cry. You don't know me, so you cry. I, don't know. I just, I shouldn't teach them that. You know how you teach your kids some certain ways. And I shouldn't have done that, but I didn't mean to do it to him. But he don't cry much, and that's my fault. But I told him, I looked at him, and then I heard, I, heard, I, I still could hear God. Cause I, was, I ain't going to lie, I was praying. I was crying out to God during that time. because I didn't know what was going to happen. We was far off. Long story short, I heard God said, God told me, let him cry. He said, let him cry. So I said, son, you can cry if you want to. And he said, I'm okay. I'm okay. Then my son is very mature for his age. Probably because it's just me and him, me and my wife. He's got a lot of grown-ups, you know. And he's like, I'm okay, Dad. I said, son, you can cry if you want to. I said, Dad didn't mean to scare you, man. And he just just let it out, man. He just let it ball out. He put his little, little, little face in his knees, and he just let it run, man. He just cried hard. I've never heard him that cry last time until I spanked him one time. That's the only time that he cried like that, but he cried hard. He was <laughs> like that kind of cry. He was letting it out, and God said, let it out. He said, God told me this recently during that time I was praying about it. I was seeking, you know, whatever. And he told me, he said, if you don't let him out, he's going to let it. He's going to keep it in. How many of us have still got memories of our parents yelling at us at a small age? Come on now, man. We got to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you some scripture that's going to make you honest. I haven't got there yet. Okay? We're going to take this thing slow because we're going to get the spirit of anger out. And we're going to go to God's word to figure it out too. Okay? Because for real, listen, listen. No matter how, I'm 44 years old and I can still, still hear my aunt cussing at me, yelling at me, her husband beating on me all the time because he was mad. I didn't do anything to him, but he beat me and yelled at me till this day. When I go back to Oklahoma, I drive by his house and I just want to burn it down. I used to, I want to burn it down. <laughs> Maybe I'm healed. <laughs> I got to remind myself, man. Woo, cause I, so I got to remind myself, man. First, you got to remind yourself. You got to remind yourself that you are healed. Because even talking about it, you can go backwards. Lord, this is a testimony now of your healing. But still, up here, my daughter may not say, but I know that she still, well, she has before. And I still remember Dad all those times used to yell at me. After she's 21 years old now, what I, with those times I yelled at her or whatever, she still remembers that. That's that bondage that the enemy wants to, to have on us for generations to gen generations. He wants to hold us down like that. But men, brothers, husbands, it stops with us, man. It stops with us. It came out that time, and then it came out at Lowe's. That spirit of anger came out at Lowe's, man. Oh, my God. That's when it really got scary. There was this guy, he was, I was doing some mulch, uh, picking up some mulch for my father-in-law, Jen's daddy. And uh, 
I guess they were fixing to close down that department. I don't know what his problem was. But he came was going to put a pallet in my truck. And he came out with that forklift. And he told his friend, he was like, they need to move. And, I, and then I'm going to talk about triggers. When I saw that, it triggered something in me. You know how men are. You know how we are. Come on, you know moms, dads. We can all vouch. You mess with your family. You mess with your children. Shoot, boy. God comes out the window and you're like, beast mode. That was me. I, was, I, I saw that. I looked at him like that. And then I saw his, he said, you need to tell them to move. And he said some other things. But when he started to back up, he was frustrated. He went, ah, oh, he did that. And then he said, he said, them blank blanks need to move. When he said that, I pulled up my pants up like that. And I walked up to him like that. And I said, hey, I'm going to pull you off that forklift. And I, and I just told him off. But I heard this voice. It wasn't God. It was, babe, babe. <laughs> What are you doing? And I, and I blacked out. Like, I blacked out. Like, for real, I blacked out. I did. I did. I was heated. My body got warm. My body got warm. My, I could feel my heart beating, man. I was like, and I, and I got real, like, 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 you know what I'm saying? And then finally, I, I, I kind of woke up a little bit. And she said, what are you doing? And I said, y'all didn't hear what he said. I want to whatever. And her dad's never seen me like that. And he kind of looked at me. You know, and I was like, and I got so, right away I got convicted, though. I was so embarrassed. She said, get in the truck. And I got in the truck, and I just, <laughs> I was so embarrassed, man. Because guess what? Once, I, once it developed, that frustration, and then I released it, and then it was the repair like Pastor Al was talking about, then that was the remorse. It happened just like that. When he said that, I was like, <gasps> that was me. Like, that happened. Because it did. It was a spirit. And it saw that trigger, and it saw a target, and it wanted it, and it was going to use me. That's it. And it happens like that. That's all it needs is to build up. You think about it so much, you can't stop thinking about it. Something triggers in you, and then you like, boom, target. Sad to say, we're going to hear it in the morning. Somebody got shot. Happens every day in San Antonio. I hate it. Every single morning. A husband shooting a wife, they're shooting the kids, they're shooting this, boyfriend goes over there, blah, blah. It's every single morning, it's because they're frustrated and that spirit of anger is doing its job. But this didn't happen that night. We see on the news that night, but that, you know, I was talking to God who was, you know, just praying for people on the news, you know, and I was like, he was like, it didn't happen that night. It's from the past. It's from Build up, build up frustrations, and then that was the release. So anyway, my father, my father-in-law told Jen, he's like, David went all west side on that guy. He even did the spit. <laughs> Y'all remember the spit? What's up, bro? You know. Y'all, oh come on, man. Y'all from the hood? I don't know what it is about that spit, man. Like, but you know, you just. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't realize that he started saying that. I was like, because they went on West, I even spit. <laughs> I was like, I, I started laughing. But I, I apologized to him. And we had to go back for another load that same night. But God told me this. He was like, I want you to apologize to them. And he said, give them, give them the money that you have in your pocket. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I had like 30 bucks in my pocket. And I never carry cash, so God must knew that was going to happen. <laughs> this is a true story, by the way. And so I went back. I saw the guys. They were closing down. I saw them, and I wanted to go over there, man. I ain't going to lie. I didn't. N nothing holy happened that night, so I'm sorry. I just didn't go. You know, I just told God, I said, I'm embarrassed. I told my father in law, I was talking to him about it. I, was like, I said, Man, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Diaz. Man, I didn't mean to go off him. Like, it's okay. At least I know that you protect my daughter and my grandson. And I was like, Yeah, but, you know, I really can't. You know, we were just talking and stuff. But then he told me in the end, he was like, But you know, you got to think about what you're going to do before you do it. And I said, So that's how I knew he wasn't really okay with it. And then I was thinking, like, if that was my daughter and I saw her husband do that, my first thought was going to be like, does he do that to my daughter? Daddies, come on now. I see a lot of young ladies getting married. And I'm wondering like, damn, how they do that? Because I would never let my baby girl go so easy. 
But I guess you know the guy before they marry all that all that stuff. But me, I love my baby girl, man. I'm like, like real protective, you know. But I thought about that, and I was like, oh man, I don't want, my, I don't want her dad thinking me that way. But that's what happens when you unload on someone. That's what happens when you let that frustration go. You can lose your testimony, you know, for a minute. You can be shameful and never show up. You can, you can close yourself off because then you feel guilty, you know. You get so angry that you don't want to, you know, go back to that house anymore because you made a fool of yourself. You went off in front of people. Now you don't want to go back to church or whatever because you let that frustration, you know, get the best of you. So anyway, I, we, um, we loaded up our mulch and all that. And I know I had to release something, you know, money or a prayer, or I don't know. So I saw this guy, and I said, hey, bro, I saw him working real hard. You know, he was the last one getting all the lawnmowers in because it was closing time. I said, hey, bro, come here, man. He was like, what's up? I was like, uh, I said, hey, man. Um, I told him what happened a little bit, and, and he, told, <laughs> he told me this. He was like, oh, them two guys in the back? Oh, man, they ain't no good. They ain't no good. They never show up to work. They always hide. So I, I feel a little better about going off on them. <laughs> I did. I, you know, they, he, said, he said they were lazy and, you know, they always causing trouble around there. So I was like, oh, for real? I was like, they, just, they deserve it then. No, I was kidding. <laughs> but I told him, I told him, I said, here, bro. And I gave him that $30. And he said, hey, man, thanks, man. I really needed this. And I said, oh, cool, man. Go ahead. He said, God bless you, man. And he took off. But I still, but that next morning, that's when I had enough. Then I started reading. I read this verse, Psalm 37, 8. Seize from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret it leads only to evil doing. Verse 9 tells us evil doers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Proverbs 14, 29 says, he, he who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. The Bible says that someone who is slow to anger has great understanding. Why is that? Why is that? If he's slow to anger, why all of a sudden he's going to have understanding? That's right. Sober. If you allow God to stop you where you're at before you go off and you kind of take a step back and kind of, ask, not kind of, but ask him, he'll give you understanding why that, had that, why that just happened. I know, I know it's Christianese and, all, you know, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And I'm going to tell you, I was going to work that next morning and I had enough. So I told God, kind of like what David did, Psalms 139, 23, and 24. I said this, and I should have done this from the beginning because I thought I knew God's word enough or whatever. But let me tell you something. Again, when you're frustrated and you're entertaining frustrations in your life that don't line up with God, when you're blaming people for your frustration, when you think you can justify your frustration, when you think it's okay, you think it's not that bad, you're blinded. You don't want to ask God questions because you think you, you, you think you have a right to be frustrated. But when I started to be, but, 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 but when I started to unleash my frustration on people that I love, or when I unleash my frustration, when I had when I started to unleash my frustrations and letting people that I really, I really respect or when I see my son crying and then I thought about you guys, thought about my brothers and sisters and just maybe one of y'all might actually believe me when I come up here and preach. <laughs> y'all might actually be watching me a little bit. And then God reminded me about the responsibility when I hold this thing. And when I stand up here, I have a responsibility to people. But that frustration says, you know what? Y'all worry about your own self. I got my own problems. <laughs> Start being selfish again. 
So I had to do this, and I did it crying. I said, was, was Psalms, 30, Psalms 139, 23, 24, search me, O God. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. This verse reminds us that God knows every aspect of our lives. And he is very interested in the smallest detail of our existence. Because we were made in his image. We were created by him. Why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he worry about every detail? Let me go to your house and punch a hole in your house. You're going to be mad at me because guess what? That's your house. You take care of your house. Or let me go to your car and do something to your car. Something that you value, something that you worked hard for, or, or build something that in, 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 you know, from the ground up and let me kick it over one day and see how mad you get at me because you created that thing. That's special to you. You know every nail, everything created to build that thing. You know how, me how much measurements, all that. That's the way God feels about us. We're his creation. Of course he's worried about that little madness you got. Of course he's worried about that little frustration that, that you have right now. Of course he's worried about that dirty look you may give somebody because they get on your nerves. He's worried about it all. Every single part of every single thing of your being, my friend's house, he is worried about, not worried about it, he, he is wanting it. He knows it. He wants to fix it. If we closed our eyes and have a spiritual hearing kind of thing, that'd be cool. Because we saw, we saw all hear this. Because God is chiseling on one of us, all of us. But you know what? When we get frustrated, God don't, stop the, God don't drop the chisel on the hammer. We step away from it. You understand? He doesn't drop the chisel on the hammer and stop working on you. We step away from it. When we, get, when we get on our own frustrations and we decide to do what we want to do with our lives and we decide to go ahead, you know what, that's enough. I'm going to go ahead and go off on this fool. And God's like, no, no, I'm working on you still. Hold on, hold on. Wait, I'm just going to chisel that off next week. I'm going to chisel that off. No, Lord. And we're going to read a little story just a second about this. I don't mean to get ahead of myself, but I'm just going with the spirit. Uh, uh, no, come here. I'm going to chisel that off. No, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them know how I feel. I'll come back to you later, and you can chisel after I beat this fool down a little bit and give him a what for and kick him a little bit. I'll come back to you. You saved me once before, you can do it again, right, Lord? Let me go over here and do what I got to do. That's just telling God, man, forget everything you've ever done in my life. I don't even care that you heal me from drugs and all that. I'm so frustrated. I just need to release it. That's the way I feel anyway. I don't know about you. That's the way I feel I did to God. I said, oh, you can take away everything else, God, but you can't take away my anger. Because it's so, it's such an emotion that it's just, almost normal to be mad at all the time, you know? And this day and age, it feels like everybody's mad when I get mad too. But that's not the way God wants us to live. That's not. That's not the way God wants us to live. It just can't be that way, my friend. South, it can't. Because the inner thoughts of a person can be hidden from people. They cannot fully see into the heart, but God can God can really see that. God can really see our hearts. Pastor Albert told us a verse last Sunday, Genesis 4, 5 through 7. And when I heard that verse, I opened it up and I read the last of chapters. I read the last verse of uh, 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 7, verse 7. I read the last part of it. And I took a step back. I was like, <gasps> 
I said, oh, my God. And I read that story before. But it didn't hit me like that. That's God's word. You can read it all the time, but when you're going through something and you, do, and you read something over, it's like, boom, for you, you know? Let's read it. And you can read it at home, study it at your house, or whatever. It's Genesis 4, verse 5 through 7. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why, ha why has your countenance fallen? Verse 7. Well, let me stop right there. And why has your countenance fallen? I thought it was so cool back in those days that Cain had a one-on-one -on -one with God himself. He could talk to him like that. God spoke to him directly. And that reminded me of me, and I hope that if something's frustrating with you today, you can ask God to help you. And believe me, if you close your eyes and pray, he's probably going to ask you, why are you so angry? Why are you so frustrated? I had to ask God that myself. Why am I so frustrated? And it took me back. You know, Pastor Albert said about how, you know, anger happens from the past probably and all that. And it took me back to when I was a kid. You probably think, like, man, God does that. He does it to you. He does that to you. If you seek him in all his ways, he will show you things, man. He will show you where that hurt is lined up at. It took me back to my grandmother's funeral. And I remember, you know how some people cry, they, they cry and they, you know, they just sit down in this chair and they just cry. Not me, man, I got mad. I got, anybody get mad when somebody died? Like, you just get mad. Maybe some of you are hurt right to this day because grandma died, mama died, or somebody died. You just don't know why, and you just mad. My grandma was a Christian to the core, man. She died of cancer. She fought, she fought cancer for so many years. It came, it, if it spread, back then, they didn't have a lot of medicine for cancer and all that. And I lived in the country, so you just couldn't just go to the doctor all the time. So grandma toughed it out most of the time through prayer and all that. But man, it just happened just like in a week, man. She was gone. It's like that, that fast. But I was mad. And I asked my cousin a little bit the other day. And I said, hey, cuz. I said, how did I ask when grandma died? He said, you were mad. He said, we had to hold you. He said, you were hitting everybody. He said, you were stomping on the ground. You was yelling at God. And I was at church. He said, you were just mad. Your daddy had to come out there and carry you out. And I started remembering that. Me and my dad, he, my dad didn't come around too much, but when he did, man, you know, he, 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 he showed me love and all that. I remember that a little bit, but I do remember just holding my cousin and just stomping on the ground. No, no. Well, my, grandma, my grandma was everything to me, man. She said everything, everything to me. Like my grandma was my, she was my person, man, my, 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 my grandma. You know what I'm saying? That was, mm, you know? And I was just so mad that I just told God right there, man, I'll never serve you like she did. I'll never serve you like she did. Man, boom, boom, boom. And then I, and then I got a tattoo on my finger right there to remind me that I was mad at God. I got a cross on my middle finger, and I put that there for a reason. I put that there because I was mad at God, and that's what I thought of him. At that time, at that time, at that time, I was so mad. So God brought me to that. I was like, whoa. I thought I forgot about that. I thought I was okay with that. But no, he said, that's where it started. That's where it started. I think I'm a pretty tough guy, you know. But man. When God shows you something, he'll break it to your knees. And when he showed me that, I really started thanking him. I mean, well, when he started showing me that, and I read that verse, 
I was all like, maybe that's why my, my continent has fallen on me for this season. I was walking around mad. I wasn't smiling anymore. I wasn't care. I missed a lot of church. They didn't want to come to this place. They didn't want to get involved. People were asking me, hey, can you minister to that person, minister to this person? I was telling them, I told them, yeah, but really, I was so frustrated. I didn't care about other people. You kidding me? They didn't want to do that. Church is over, man. I jet to the car, man. I didn't want to talk to nobody. Not that I would go off on anything, but I just didn't feel it, man. You know, my continent, my face sure didn't feel it. I already look mad anyway, but, you know, my face is already mean anyway. Add a little bit of depression and frustration, it's really going to go. <laughs> but he asked him why his continence had fallen. That means Cain was walking around with all over his face. He, wasn't, he couldn't hide it, man. It was all over him. God asked him, what kind of, uh, God wanted to know about his mood. He was worried about his insides. Cain, why has your continence fallen? Why are you walking around ticked? Why are you looking like that? Why are you looking depressed? Why are you looking like you hate the world? Why are you looking like that? I can give you a little religious saying. He shouldn't be like that. He knew God himself. But I guess it didn't matter. When you're mad, you're mad. No matter how close you are to God, frustration is going to come to you. For real, right? After that show, I was like, man, that's Cain. He was talking God straight up. Shouldn't he be happy and la, 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 la? But no. So Cain, I mean, so frustration, anger, it just can go all around this room. It don't matter. You hold this mic, singing a song, playing a guitar. It don't matter. But this is where, this is where it got good news, though. Well, hold on. Verse 7 says, if you do well, God tells him this. If you do well, will not your continents be lifted up? And if you do not do well, Sin is crouching at the door. So when we are frustrated, like I said, we're very vulnerable. So when we're like that and we're entertaining these moods, when we're walking around the press, when we're fixing to go off, when we're boiling up inside, there's that sin, man. He's going to open that door anytime now. Anytime now. Sister Leticia, man, I know you got those prayers going on. You love the hallelujah, but you frustrated. And only I see that. Open up that door, sister. Come on. I know you, I know you waved that flag on a Sunday. But come on, baby. Open that door. I'm going to get you. Yeah. That's how it is. Just waiting. We're, we're the door. Our heart's a door. Our heart is a door. Our mind's a door. We can let stuff in, and guess what? That's when that spiritual anger comes in. I got him now. He let me in, man. I, I think my, my anger was like I had it, I had it, I had it cracked. <laughs> I had it cracked enough where he was just slithering in a little bit, giving me a little what for. That's why I was trying to, that's why I was finna go off on somebody, and I seen it. That's what it is, man. And if you do well, I mean, if you do, and if you do, you know, when you see, if you, you know, you do not, you know, you have to really look at the word. Because he's telling you the truth. If you do not do it, <laughs> sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you. Sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you. Its desire is for you. That gave me the willies. That means that's the, let, let the enemy in and that he's going to do, he's going to do what he came here to do. And that's steal, kill, and destroy. You see, we read that, oh, you know, that's cool, man. No, 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 no. He's stealing and killing and destroying every single day. He's on the move. That's what he wants you to do. That's what, that's what he wants us to do. The kids we prayed for this morning, I'm pretty sure parents did the same thing to kids all around the world. But if we don't introduce them to Christ or we don't do like these families do, bring them to church and all that, that one day when, that's, when that anger and all that is at their doorstep and that sin's crouching, they're 30, 40 years old and they let it in, that can happen to them. It can happen to my son. 
I look at him sometimes, I'm like, man, are you so precious? I could never see you so mad. I could never see you hit anybody. But you know what? If daddy doesn't get his crap together in the name of Jesus, it's going gonna, it's gonna to jump on him and he's going to be ticked off all the time. He's going to give somebody a what for at school. He's going to tell the teacher how he really feels because daddy does it. Daddy yells at mama all the time. Why can I? Daddy yells at my mama. Why can I yell at you? He told me the other day, he was like, dad, this, uh, Dad, this guy, uh, this, this, this uh, second grader came in the bathroom and he, and he bumped my shoulder. But you know what I did, Dad? And I said, I gave him the Baptiste face. And I said, what's that? I went. <sighs> <sighs> it's funny, but not funny. <laughs> because I'm teaching him, if somebody bumps his shoulder, show him who you are. Not show him who you belong to. I was more worried about my last name than worried about his name. And I was like, God, David, you suck. <laughs> you suck as a dad, Dave, man. But there's a way we can still teach our children to be tough, but not tough, not so tough where they're going to punch somebody in the eye when they do something bad to them. So I told him, I said, you know what, son? Next time my second grader does that, tell him, is that all you got? No, I was kidding. I didn't say that. But I told him, I said, I said, son, if he does that, just say, excuse me. He said, say, excuse me? I said, that's all. If he bumps, because he's, he's, he's been telling me that some kids kind of bully him, I guess. Not, not too bad, because he's not doing that. The school is going to hear. Oh, I'm healed. Sorry. I'm going to say the school's going to hear me if that happens. See? But I'm healed. But anyway. <laughs> but he's been telling me some kids or whatever, and I told him the wrong thing to do. But this time I told him, I said, son. That happens, go teacher, blah, 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 you know. But I told him, I said, son, just, just, just go, just wait till they leave. I'm trying to tell him to do other things besides punch him in the face or show him how tough you are. So he's been, he's been doing that. <laughs> he told me he did it the other day. He said, dad, just told him, excuse me. And I said, there you go, kid. That's it. Amen. But hey, but this is where it got me. This is where this verse got me. It says, this, uh, Sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. This is before Cain killed his brother. So when I looked at that, I was like, you mean God gave him a warning, and he still did that? You mean God came and counseled him one-on-one, -on -one and he still went off? But then I couldn't judge because God does that to us too. And we still do what we want. Right? We still go on and act mad. We still go ahead and say what we got to say, even though God warns us from the beginning. Because I believe that God would rather give you a warning than always doing the cleaning off all the time. He'll clean you off. If you read on for the sake of time, I'm not going to read it. But if you read on, he still covered Cain. Read it. Study for yourself. He'd be like, hmm. No, for real. He still covered Cain. You know, not, not, I mean, Cain still had what he was coming for. Believe me, he was still, you know, some stuff really happened to him in here. But what I'm saying is, is that God warns us before anything happens to us, before we step over that boundary. Because let me tell you something, y'all. Some people, and I could have been, I could have been that person that stepped over that boundary and I probably wouldn't be holding this microphone today. I probably been having a salt and battery charge on me because I really wanted to pull that guy off that forklift and hit him. And I was just about to. Would have had a salt charge on me, would have had a, something on me, you know, but that's my anger. I don't know how you guys get angry. And if you don't, God bless you. You know, and I don't know how you handle your frustration. I hope it's God's way. But what I'm saying is, praise God for his voice sounding like this. Babe! <laughs> that was God and her. God will give you that. Men, men, grab a hold of your honey and say, thank you for stopping whatever the enemy wanted to do by listening to God. 
We don't give our wives enough credit, man. We're sitting there free and not out of jail, probably because he's supposed to shut the heck up and get in the truck. <laughs> but I wanted to share this with you. Last Sunday, when, uh, when, uh, Pastor, Albert, uh, when Pastor Albert gave the altar call, you know, I really didn't want to go. I really didn't want to go, uh, but the message just spoke to me. And uh, I, I encourage you to listen to the messages during the week. You know, listen to it on YouTube or whatever, listen to it on the week. Listen to it during the week. And it, it, so you can, you know, you can study it during the week. It'll, it'll be your tool. It'll, you keep on learning. Just, just don't take it today. Just don't take it today. And it's be la, 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 la. No, 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 no. Study it. Study it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. There's the, there's the Bible stories right here. Ask God to show you how he's going to work with you in this. Or maybe you're ministering to somebody. And they are dealing with anger. Because that's the thing. That, that, that's all of us. That's our job is that we're supposed to make disciples. We're supposed to go out to the mission field. We're supposed to go out there and do all that. But if we are frustrated and mad, we ain't never going to do that. We're not. It's going to be about us every Sunday. I got to get fixed again. I got to get fixed again. They ain't telling me what I want. And people are out there hurting because God needs, God needs us. Well, he don't need us, but he wants to use us. But we can't be used by God if we're filled with, filled with frustration and anger. We just can't. Take it from me. I can't do it. I won't do it. If I'm mad, I'm mad. That's it. But I don't want to be like that no more. I'm tired of being wishy-washy with God all the time. I want him to heal me so he can use me. And that's his truth. And this is one of my assignments. It's not that I always want to throw my Kool-Aid out there for y'all to drink, my business, but that's how God uses me. So I just say, go on and do what you got to do then. You know? But I was over there, and they gave the invita invitation, and I told my wife, I said, I said, oh, man. She was like, what? Do you feel like you got to go up there? And I was like, yeah. I was like, but man, I don't be the only one. I'll wait till somebody else walks up. But nobody was moving. Now I ain't trying to make, make her feel bad. <laughs> I'm just, just saying, like, y'all ever feel that way? If, it, if it's like for you and you know you got to go up there, man, you know. But it's like that. It's that, but it's, it's that, it's that spirit sometimes pulling you too. Can I be honest? It's that spirit of whatever, not trying to let you go yet, but you know you're you battling it, man. You're fighting that. You've been fighting all week. Nobody knows what goes on in your own personal life but God. But come on, we know. Let's go. Let's, let's be honest. I was like, and she's like, but what helped me is with, is with, she told me, she's like, I'll go with you. Somebody who I yelled at, somebody who's seen the worst in me, wants to see me healed. She wanted to go with me. She wanted to go up here with me when she could have said, you're on your own, fool. You yelled at me, man. But she don't hold a grudge. That's why I know she's a true woman of God. Because she don't hold a grudge. She loves me unconditionally. And she has for over 16 years. She's loved me that long, and she has always loved me. I ain't gonna lie to you. I thought that day she got that car, that that was it, y'all. I thought I was gonna... She's going to come to this church, and I'm going to have to find me another church. Because we was going to be divorced, man. You know, because I thought that was it. I really did. Y'all ever come to that end? With your husband and wife? Come on. No, you got to wait for your hand. Don't, wait, don't, don't raise your hand. That's too much. I don't want you to do that. Keep your business. That, keep that to yourself. But I'm just saying, I'll be honest with you. I'm real with you and tell you these things because that stomps on the devil every time I tell my testimony. Every time I tell my testimony, man, I kick him in the teeth one more time. <laughs> And I love it. I love it, man. I love it. They will know. They will know by the word of your testimony. Who will know? They will know. Who will know? They will know. <laughs> and he's going to know that he's still down there where he belongs. So she came. So. She grabbed my hand, I came down here, and I was standing right there. And I started to, now y'all ever wonder about deliverance? Y'all hear pastors talk about us? Y'all ever hear him say, who the son sets free? And you wonder, you wonder what's supposed to happen when they say that. You wonder what they say about deliverance and, you know, God casting out demons and all that. He still does that. And I thank God that our pastor is still casting out demons. <laughs> And they ain't ashamed of it. I was stood up here. I mean, stood up here, and I was kind of, I was just praying. You know, I knew I was up here. I was praying. Me and God was going, 
you know, I, I was, I, I feel like I was on the right track. And then good old pastor, I was saying the, saying the spirit things. He said something that, you know, about the angels and stuff. And I, and then I heard him. He's like, I just felt the spirit. It's like, just go on your knees. I need you to submit. I need you to submit. Some of us men, we had to submit. Now, I'm not telling you that you're not manly if you don't get on your knees. I'm not telling you that, but I'm telling you this as men. Brothers, I'm telling you this, man. You got to let go of that pride. You want your honey to love you. You want your kids to respect you. Let them see daddy on your knees in front of God himself and watch what happens. I'm telling you. My son grabbed his Bible this morning and he said, Daddy, I want, I want to carry my Bible like you do. Not get mad like I do. Carry your Bible like you do. But listen, I got on my knees, man, and I just got on my knees, and I just, and I just, I was praying, right? I was praying, and I could tell, man, my flesh still fighting. I was like, God, how, how much more do I got left in me? That flesh, man, just, just still, you know, like, I was just, and then finally, man, I just, I just started, I started talking to God. Pastor Abba was saying good prayers, but my, my, my myself, I started talking to God. This is what happened. And I started talking to God. I said, Lord, help me. Lord, please set me free. Please set me free. Please set me free, Lord. And then I started thanking him. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. But I felt like a, you know how you lower something down? This is what I see in my spirit. I felt as I was thanking him, I was being lowered down. My prayer, my, my pride was being lowered down like a crank. I was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. 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 And I just got down, man. Well, I just got down all the way down to my, to, to my, to my face hit there. And I apologize for my ugly crying when I cry. I just let my spirit roll, man. Sorry. When I cried down there, I put y'all show y'all heard me. Because I heard it on YouTube. I was like, oh, I'm just mad to cut that out. So I, heard, I was like, who is that? I was like, and Jen, and Jen was in the other room. She said, I heard you. And I was like, ugh. I was like, oh, my God. I was like, so, Matt, cut that out, bro. <laughs> Put some angel in there or something. <laughs> so I started, I started crying. And, and, and then you, know, you, ever watch, you ever watch movies where, where they throw the bomb and then the, the, it go, everything goes deaf and they go, beep. That's what I heard. I heard I got deaf. I got deaf and said, so, all I heard was that, and I got cloudy. I started crying, crying, and I was just crying or whatever, letting it go. I just feel, oh, I started breathing heavy. And then, I, and then when um, Pastor Albert said, said uh, uh, I think he said, like, release, like, release, and it said, set free or whatever, and I heard a pop, pop. It just popped. And it went pop. Like my ear, you know, you know, you're riding an airplane, your ears pop? It's exactly what it did, man, pop. I took, I took it like a deep, like, a, like, a, like another, like another swallow of breath, like that. And I was like, you know, I was like, and I just started going like that. But man, let me tell you, I've never heard, I never heard so clearly in my entire life until that day. I swear I could hear it outside, man. I was hearing so clearly, man. I did not want to get up. It was just a clear feeling. And God said, all that frustration that you felt had you deaf. He said, but now you can hear clearly. So that was for me. So, man, I got up, man. I got up. Now, I've been delivered before from, you know, different things. And, you know, I shake and flop like a fish and do all that crazy stuff. But that time, it was more kind of like a, kind of like a, just a real peaceful deliverance. You know what I'm saying? But my ears, my ears, man, I could actually hear better. Like more things were clearer to me. I was starting to hear God's scriptures again. And even the worship music, I was starting to feel a little better. And I walked out of that place, man, I was happy, man. I was happy. I'm still happy to this day. I ain't got mad. Something tried to frustrate me. The triggers tried to come again because they'll come again. I tried to come again. I was like, dang, man, that don't even bother me. I went to a wedding and didn't even grab one time. I told my wife, hey, when we going to Houston to go shopping? Yeah. Uh, let's go. But let, me, let me tell you something. I sit in my car for five hours. No, 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 no. I sit in my truck for five hours and wait for her. But I'm going to do it with a smile this time. <laughs> a little bit. No, let's get it. But anyway, let's stand to your feet, if you don't mind. Let's go home. Amen. Let's go home and walk this out.